Welcome everybody to this edition of Crossing the Spotlight. Thanks for joining us today. Whether you're listening in your car or whether you're at home, wherever you are, we're, we want to welcome you. I'm Brother Dan Goodwin and sitting with me, Dr. Charles Hiltabittle. And uh, we're doing something a little different today because we're doing this for television as well. Um, Doc, we're doing a, a question and answer. Yes. Thing. Uh, ask the host. Some folks have asked a question or two. Yeah, or three. a whole bunch of questions. We'll never get to them all. But, um, <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't advertise this for the radio folks out there, but uh, I did it on my Facebook page and uh, mm -hmm. got a lot of feedback on that. People had questions and uh, some good questions too. I, I, love, I love questions. And uh, so I thought maybe we would tackle a couple of them here on the radio. I think our radio audience would enjoy this. Well, if, if the television people have a question, the, the radio people probably do as well. Yeah, uh, and I... Uh, um, I enjoy this kind of stuff too. I love to hear when I see an interview. I love to see when they, anyone got a question? I love yeah. to listen to that. Right. Uh, the, sometimes the question's good. Sometimes well, the guy gives an answer and it's, uh, yeah. so let's, uh, let's tackle a couple of these. A lot of them, Doc, were on uh, Genesis 6. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions that people have. Sure. Um, well, course, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there. <laughs> there sure is. And a lot of improper teaching there and as of well. Course, I wrote a book, and you have a chapter in there. In uh -huh. fact, you have a couple of things that you put that we put in the book. Uh, the Great End Time Distraction deals with that very thing about yep. dead fallen angels come down to the earth <laughs> in Genesis 6 and, and yep. fall in love with human women and, and have babies. Uh, that's... So, so let, let's let's jump into this. By the way, you can find us at ProstonSpotlight.com, and uh, you can get some of the books that we're talking about here are there. Doc has books on there on our bookstore, as well as mine. Uh, so, Doc, let's let's get into one of these uh, right here. Um, somebody has asked about the, how tall these giants are. They said that they were told. Uh, in fact, let me find that question here. They, they were told that giants were 30 feet tall. This is Joseph from Pennsylvania who asked, um, do you believe and does scripture tell us how big the giants were? He said, I had a pastor say that some were 30 feet tall and he believes that we will see them soon. In yeah. other words, the return yeah. of these things. Right. Well, that's a combination of several different um, ideas that men have come up with over the years. Yeah. And the Bible has nothing to say about absolutely the size of them. He does give us the size of Goliath. Uh, Goliath. Uh, he gives us the size he of the was bed what, of nine King and a half Lord. feet tall. If I got that right, or was he taller than that? He's eleven something. Yes. Eleven feet tall. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, in our museum, we have a skeleton from Moab, Utah, that's uh, somewhere a little over eight, almost eight and a half feet tall. Yeah. Uh, Archaeological discoveries, some of them, of course, have been stretched out of shape over the years as far as actual size, but there have been maybe some as close to 18 or so. But I've never heard of ever in an archaeological dig. Um, we've never heard of anything near a 30 foot tall. No. So where are they getting this? They're getting this Book of Enoch, possibly some outside. I, I don't. I've never really read the Book of Enoch. Don't. Not going to waste my time on fiction. And, uh, but what happens is people will say something and then somebody repeated. And it's not long until what's been repeated that the first guy said isn't anywhere what the first guy said. Yeah. And this is what it's all. It's none of this is substantiated from scripture and it's not even substantiated in archaeological discoveries. Now, what would your answer to be to somebody that says, but I've been on the internet and, uh, yeah. and I've been on to some of these Nephilim sites yeah. and they've got skulls that are taller than men. Well, it's fake, isn't it? It's not it's, real. It is not real. It is not real. No. Now, his second part of his question, uh, he, he said, his pastor said that we're going to see these again. Yeah. Well, that's because they <laughs> misunderstood. They, they think the interpretation uh, of uh, uh, the Hebrew word of Nephilim, they, they think that's been translated properly in our King James Bible, uh, giants. Uh, th they think that has something to do with fallen angelic uh, involvement. Right. And that's not found in your Bible anywhere either. Yes, it certainly isn't. Those are, these are all the insertions of men's ideas being inserted into Thus saith the Lord, when the, lust, when the Lord didn't say any of it. Okay. 
Uh, I'm with you. And uh, and by the way, the guy Joseph from Pennsylvania says, I'm not believing this at all. So, yeah. So he's. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that, that, and you know it, a lot of a lot of good people are, are mixed up on it. Yeah. You know, we understand the foundation of it is they believe in a gap theory. Yeah. A gap between verse 1 and 2 of Genesis chapter 1, which, by the way, is not existent either. What they call a pre-Adamic world. Yeah. Well, for seven days, or for six days, it was pre-Adamic. <laughs> that's right. But that's how, but anyway, no, uh, there is no gap yeah. at the beginning or the end. And you have a book about that, or a CD I have or a, a DVD I have a two DVD set on the, on the gap theory okay. to help people understand Okay, and so they can, you can go to the website yeah. and right. look at Doc's bookstore, and he has some good material on the gap theory, and uh, you've got... But that's where they get the foundation, and they think that there was a Luciferian world, and fallen men, and this is where they get the idea that this is fallen angel activity, and it's not. Your book deals very yeah. explicitly about yeah. impossible for non-flesh and blood individuals to I produce really children. I really think, Doc, that this age that we're living in with the, with the crazy stuff in all, the whole prophecy world is talking yes. about giants, monsters, return of the yeah. Nephilim, UFOs abducting people. It's because they've misinterpreted the entire purpose of Jesus saying, as the days of Noah yeah. were. They missed it. Yeah. Exactly right. The That's days why I wrote Noah, that booklet on it. I, I'm telling they missed it. Yeah. The, there's nothing in them passages, there's nothing in the story of no. Noah about fallen angels no. No. mating with human women. It's all about the wickedness of man. Yeah. Now, can't you just see Satan laughing? Oh, don't this? you know? He. <laughs> this hey. is not almost every subject in in theology has been convoluted down through the time because the devil couldn't just, he couldn't just throw it out. He's got to muddy the waters they, up. They've taken away the responsibility, the accountability, accountability of man, of man. Yes. in Genesis 6. That's right. Man That's caused that, not, angels, not fallen angels. And they want to blame somebody besides man, but, but they can't. Some have gone so far as to say that everybody in the earth was corrupted with the DNA of Satan, yeah. well, had no soul and could not be saved. That's why a lot of people in prophecy world right now is talking about the the jab thing that's supposedly altering the DNA of people. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily altering DNA. It's it's altering the immune system. Yeah. That's not one and the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's hit this one, Doc. Somebody uh, asked, and I don't have a name for this one. Somebody asked, what's the difference in Daniel's 70th week, Daniel chapter 9, uh -huh. and the tribulation? You want? Yeah. Well, uh, we, we often use the word tribulation, and then we in the prophecy world, and I'll, I'm guilty of it, I'll be speaking, and I'll say, uh, the 70th the week of Daniel, and people are thinking, what's he mean? And uh, the tribulation period that we talk about in Revelation 6 through 18, um, that is, by the way, that's actually Daniel's 70th week. Yeah. And it goes back to Daniel 9. And the 490-year prophecy was broken up into three distinct time periods. The first two together was 483 years. Mm -hmm. And the last 70th week, which is not a week of seven days, but a, a, of seven years. Yeah. And uh, so they are one and the same, the tribulation and yeah. Daniel 70th week. So in week. other words, you could say the tribulation period... Or you could call it the 70th week of Daniel, and you're talking about the exact you're same thing. You're talking about the exact same thing. Yep. A 2,520-day period of time. Yep. And it's, the Bible breaks it up in two halves. you got yes. the first half, and you've got the, the second half, which is yes. called the Great Tribulation. Great Tribulation. The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. Yep. And, and that tells you that it's, it's, a, it's a dealing with Israel, Jacob's trouble. It's not dealing with the church. All right. Well, we're going to get in trouble on this next one, Doc. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. We were asked by, uh, let's see, who? Sharon. Uh, let's, no, Ramona in Minnesota asked this question, and we're going to talk about this on TV briefly. Should Christians <laughs> be teaching their children about Santa Claus? Mm. And... Uh, I know you and I probably are on the same page on this, Doc. I, I grew up with Santa Claus as a I think most all of us boy. did. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I mean, all the way till I was 21, I think. No, I'm kidding. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, about about the, about nine years old, I saw a bicycle in the basement. Uh, my mom was painting, and I wondered about. It, and then when I saw it under the Christmas tree, I got it figured out. <laughs> well, you know, Doc, there's something interesting about the name Santa, and I, I hate to bust people's bubble yeah. here, but the name Santa, if you if you turn the letters around, is the same letters exactly for Satan. Mm -hmm. And uh, doesn't he do? Does doesn't he steal the glory from Christ? Sure. Well, there. Of course, it's supposedly a man by the name Saint Nicholas, and all this kind of stuff. Which is Catholic. Which is Catholic, and our our listeners and viewers ought to understand the greater majority, if not the greatest majority, of the Christmas story that we have followed for years are. Catholic in origin yeah. and in teaching, and the greater majority are not even biblical in their context. Yeah. There's a lot of things about, about Santa that, that make you have second thoughts here. Yeah. We, uh, we write a Christmas list. So in other words, we pray to him. We ask mm -hmm. him for things. Yep. Um, he knows who's naughty or nice. Yeah. Well, isn't that, isn't that a description of God? Yep. God knows who's, yep. who's naughty and nice. There's a whole bunch of things about this that just don't fit right. It is, and uh, I have a three DVD and a three CD set of the truths of the Christmas story. Nearly 30 years of researching it all. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you, I, there's not much about our modern Christmas no. that is biblical out of the Bible or out of archaeological or historical documentation. Folks, I would highly recommend you go to the website, ProstonSpotlight.com, click on Doc's Bookstore, get that Christmas set. Um, when I first met you, Doc, and I brought you on, I was with Prost News back then, mm -hmm. I was in Oklahoma City, television, and we brought you out with that. And that, that was my introduction to you with the first time we brought you on. We <laughs> sold hundreds of those things. Yeah. Um, good stuff. It's been a big help to a lot of people. And it brings the real understanding of what really what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not about Santa. It's about no. the Lord Jesus Christ. By it's all way, about I, redemption. <laughs> I have no problem celebrating Christmas. I, I happen to think it can be used of God. Sure. To sure. People's hearts are open. Uh, at Absolutely. Time of year. Absolutely. And I believe you can reach them. <laughs> the, the scenario that is played out today does carry the, the redemption theme with it, yeah. uh, even though it's convoluted. And it's all about the innocent one that was born for the purpose as a man yeah. to go to Calvary's cross to provide redemption. And, and we got we got like 30 seconds, Doc. T tell them a little bit about what they need here. Well, first of all, you need to understand you're lost. We're born that way. It's not God's fault. Uh, God doesn't send anybody to hell. We're born headed to hell. God sent His Son to Calvary's cross. And when a person understands they're lost and, and then they realize how much God loved them, that He sent His Son to Calvary's cross, then he realized that Jesus loved you so much that He died for us. The Bible said uh, to the Philippian jailer, the message was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Put your faith and trust in what Jesus did for you. Amen. That's wonderful. And you say so often, Doc, it's all about redemption. Yes, it is. Well, folks, that's all the time we have. Thanks for listening. Or if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. And until next time, keep your eyes on them skies.